What's going down, everybody? It's your boy. That guy, my hot tuner, back in for another one. And this one is a, uh, I found this new channel called Pablito's Way. Um, and this video is called This Is How She Spent It, or This Is How She Spent It After the Bank accident, blah, 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 Accidentally Gave Her Too Much Money. Um, so, yeah, so obviously, you know, things happen. And some people don't realize that that's a crime to, to, to take money that was accidentally deposited into your account and spend it, even though it was put into your account on accident and it shouldn't be your fault. But if you go ahead and decide to spend this money that was wrongly deposited into your account, you can't get in trouble, okay? You can, you can, you will, you will get in trouble. Let's not even say you can, you will get in trouble. Anyways, man, let's go ahead and give a big shout out to all the members of the channel. Uh, we got Happy Chick, Epic Service, uh, Lynn Willow, Jamal, Jeffrey, Holla Girl, Taylor, Funny Farm, Jordan, Christy Poe, Holla Boy, Marla Marie, Diesel, Tammy, Nick, Creatively Insane, Nicole, Aaron, Mama Dukes, Misty Summers, Driver Thoughts, Robin Lynn, Amy Jane Doe, Liz, Nugget, My Hood Life, and Gary Willis. Gang, gang, gang. Shout out to y'all, man. And uh, if you want to get a personal shout out in the videos, the lives, all that good jazz, take advantage of some perks, go ahead and think about hitting that join button down below. Join the channel and, you know, help us be successful. You dig what I'm saying? Help us, help us be able to do some cool stuff. <laughs> you dig okay anyways i love y'all and uh if none of that fits your fancy just subscribe bell notification it helps your boy out tremendously and we're trying to hit 100k one day so uh yeah let's 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 do that anyways let's go ahead and jump into this and see how these people spent the money that was wrongly given to them let's go here are a few of the weirdest things that can happen while doing banking number 10 sarah daisley Sarah Daisley made Australian and international headlines not just for her bank fraud, but for her fashionable arrest. She made an effort to get arrested in style, wearing a slim gray onesie and gold designer slides. Authorities what? charged her with 112 fraud-related offenses, God. which is a pretty impressive amount. Nigga, what? A hundred and... <laughs> Holy... She was out here trapping, trapping. She was grinding harder than the rest. <laughs> Damn it. She used Damn. fake documents to submit loan applications and launder half a million dollars. Woo! Sarah worked at the same bank she scammed and used her managerial position to steal cash and transfer it to fake accounts she controlled. If you're going to Damn. commit fraud, then there's no better job than working at the bank you're trying to scam. She cried in court when she learned that the judge denied her bail, meaning that she'd have to spend Christmas behind bars. However, Sarah's criminal life goes deeper than stealing cash from bank accounts. Her husband, David Sakar, is a convicted drug dealer tied to Australian organized crime. And those 112 charges we mentioned are on top of 15 other charges brought against Damn. her a year before. Number nine, Holy Robert shit. Pipes. Robert Pipes, a man from West Monroe, Louisiana, ended up with this mugshot after attempting to cash a fraudulent check. Maybe he could have gotten away with it, but what? people are bound to remember your face when you look like this. According to the arrest papers, the bank called the police after Robert left. The manager told them that Robert walked in and tried to cash a fake check. The check was for $1,941.16. Maybe Pipes thought writing number. the check for an off. This nigga was trying to pay his rent. He was like, I need just this much. Like, you come on, man. He just needed, he was just trying to get enough to pay rent. <laughs> Specific amount of money would make it seem more realistic. Or maybe he just needed that exact amount of right, money for something. Saying. Either way, it didn't end up working out for him. Pipes told the police that it wasn't his fault. He claimed two guys had offered to pay him $200 to cash some checks. He said he knew the checks were bad, but he was drunk at the time, so he agreed to do it anyway. Pipe said that the guys dropped him off at the bank and then left. Nobody ever cracked down these masterminds, so it's unknown if they were real or just a creation of Pipe's drunken imagination. Number eight, wow. Cassandra Morales. Cassandra Morales was arrested after police uncovered her unique bank scheme. She used random homeless people she found on the street to help her commit financial fraud. Morales had them go into banks, open an account, and deposit fake checks into those accounts. Then she'd come in and withdraw the money, transferring it to her account. She withdrew over $20,000 in just a few months with this scam, which she ran 26 <laughs> different times. To avoid detection, Morales had the homeless person open up an account using the minimum cash required. Then, once the account was open, they would only deposit fraudulent checks worth less than $200. Amounts that low don't automatically trigger red flags in the bank system. Eventually, the Damn. banks caught on, and police identified Morales and a man she was often with as the primary suspects. They couldn't hide behind their homeless pawns forever at some point they had to get the money for themselves exposing their real identities 
Number seven, Eddie Alon. So crazy, bro. In 2002, Eddie like, Alon. The idea of like trying to even try and like to commit some bank fraud shit, like that's just such a wild concept to me, man. You know, like, like I said, like you have to be really, I feel like you, you got to be really smart or really stupid. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a combination of the both to, or the two to actually think that that's a good idea to go rob a bank or do some sort of bank fraud and then to think that you're going to get away with it. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you got to be, you got to be fucking nuts. Confess to stealing 250 million shekels what? from trade bank in oh, Israel. Shekels. She stole the money from customers over five years, but hardly spent any of it on herself. Alon stole the money for her brother, Ofer Maximov, to pay off his gambling debts to different organized crime groups in Israel. She tried to save his life and wound up in jail because of it. Both Damn. were sentenced for fraud and spent 15 years in jail for their parts in the scheme. Alon's theft was so big that it collapsed the entire bank and cost Israel half a billion and shekels in deposit insurance. Yeah. Alon's scam was so profound that it shook the very fabric of Israel organized crime, redrawing the map of the criminal underground as we know it. Low-level crooks nuts. rose to power overnight with the millions flowing through their illegal casinos. According to Israeli police, the money circulated through the underground economy. It ended up in the pockets of loan sharks, gamblers, crime bosses, and other people who had some slights of Maximov's debts. The money stolen sparked gang wars that lasted for years afterwards. Those wars spilled over into the United States as police busted several arms of the Israeli mafia in Los Angeles. Number six, that's junior crazy. and senior. These that's, that's next entries align with the more like how you how you take that much money that they literally collapse the damn banking system and shit like, bro, like holy traditional cow. bank scam. You can do all kinds of fun things with your dad, like going to baseball games or arguing about politics. Anthony Anarella Sr. decided bank fraud made for a great bonding activity to try with his son, Anthony Anarella Jr. They were arrested together after they tried to withdraw thousands of dollars from a fake bank account they set up. The manager at the Wells Fargo that they tried to scam called the cops on them after they tried to take out $18,000 in cash. Taking out 18 grand in cash isn't normal customer behavior, making the bank nope. rightfully suspicious who needs 18 grand in cash other than criminals and people being blackmailed by criminals the manager told them he had to verify a few things and he could not give them the money right then and there anthony senior left his phone number with the manager telling him to call when the money was ready instead the manager called the cops police caught up to the father-son team and found what they called a large sum of cash along with several fake ids Apparently, they'd committed similar crimes in a nearby country. They were charged with larceny, criminal Damn. impersonation, identity theft, and forgery. They should have just thrown the old pigskin around if they wanted to have some bonding time. The court set their bail at $250,000. That's it. Number five, Jamari Britton. Jamari Britton's getaway driver called the cops on him after robbing several banks in Florida. However, his getaway what? driver never got in any high-speed chases. It was an Uber driver who'd spent the day driving Britton around town. Britton Ubered from bank to what? bank trying to withdraw money from accounts that weren't his using stolen IDs. When he got arrested, he told police that his name was Andre and handed them a driver's license listing his name as Andre Rodriguez. He claimed he was withdrawing all this cash for a music video, which was a pretty clever excuse. It's pretty common to see rappers throwing around lots of cash in music videos. When police found him, Britton had several different IDs on him. Four were his, and three were completely different people. They charged him with possessing a counterfeit driver's license, giving false ID to law enforcement, fraud, and illegal use of a credit card. These aren't wow. the most common crimes, so at least he gets points for being a little creative. Maybe next I time guess. he'll hire an actual getaway driver instead of calling okay. Uber. Number four, Robert and Tiffany Williams. Robert and Tiffany Williams, a couple from Pennsylvania, faced felony theft charges when their bank accidentally deposited $120,000 into their account. That was the bank's fault, but the couple spent most of it and actively avoided the bank's calls, quickly turning a random mistake into a legal problem. According to police, they bought an SUV, a camper, two four-wheelers, and a car trailer. It sounds like they what? used the money to plan a sick camping trip. Right. They even gave $15,000 to a friend in need. But how did they get the money in the first place? Somebody did deposit $120,000. However, the bank teller typed in an account number wrong. The person who was actually supposed to get the money asked the bank what was going on, and the bank realized that the Williams family ended up with it. In an interview, Robert blamed poor legal advice that he'd gotten from some people. He probably thought the money was theirs to spend if someone accidentally deposited it. 
With all wow. the checks and balances banks put in place, many questions. Like the a- thing, about, look, like the thing about that is like, okay, if you went and deposited a check and you realized, man, my, my where's my money at, man? Like I, this shit is not. I don't see it in pending. It ain't in my account. It's not on hold. Like it's just not here. It's just missing. You're gonna call. And you're gonna be like, where the fuck is my money? You know what I'm saying? And the bank is be like, oh shit, we got to figure out where the money went. You know what I mean? And when they find it, like, yeah, like you're hoping on the end of the person who's waiting for their money that you get your money back. You know what I'm saying? So like, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. You get in some crazy large deposit, you should be like, oh shit, let me call everybody and make sure that this shit is not a mistake because I don't want to be reliable for $125,000 that I don't fucking have. You think what I'm saying? Just mistake could have happened. And again, we're not too surprised with all the scammers and swindlers we cover on this channel. Check out this video for the full story on Robert and Tiffany Williams here. Number three, they Nick Leeson. The dumb shit. Nick Leeson is an English criminal and that's former you know, derivative. Genuinely, that's how you know they just was like, I could spend this shit. Great. Cool. We, we just had a come up because they went and bought some He dumb committed stuff, such massive you. fraud that he single handedly brought down Barings Bank, the in oldest merchant bank in England. Leeson made unauthorized trades with money that was not his. And he had a bold strategy for trying to make sure he always came out on top. Every time he lost money, doubled the amount on his next trade to recoup his losses. This worked. Well, it worked for a while anyway. Long enough for Leeson's boss to put him in charge of the bank's futures and options office in Singapore. On January 16th, 1995, Leeson placed a short straddle in the Singapore and Tokyo stock exchanges. Basically, he bet that the Japanese stock market would not move significantly overnight. He wasn't supposed to be doing this, legally speaking, but he did it anyway. That night, the Kobe earthquake hit, sending the market into a crazy tailspin and destroyed Destroying Leeson's plan. He made a series of increasingly risky bets to try and get the money back before anyone noticed, but nothing paid off. Leeson left a note that read, I'm sorry, and fled Singapore to hide. He lost wow. $1.4 billion of company money, and the what? bank never recovered. Leeson stayed on the run for a while, moving to Malaysia and Thailand and Germany, but eventually he was arrested and imprisoned. <laughs> to learn more about how Leeson basically <laughs> hid his mistakes in a special million? oops account, a check out the full story a in a this billion? video. Number Holy two, Christine shit. Lee. In 2016, a Malaysian student named Christine spent $4.6 million someone deposited into her bank account. She thought the money was put there by her parents. It wasn't. It was actually put there thanks to her bank fraud scheme. Christine was a chemical engineering student studying in Australia. She was arrested while trying to board a flight with an emergency issue passport and charged with dishonestly obtaining financial advantage by deception and knowingly dealing with the proceeds of crime. Basically stealing and spending stolen money. Saying that she thought her parents gave her the money is a pretty lousy excuse. How did she do it exactly? She opened an account with Westpac Bank where she received regular deposits that were actually from her parents. Her parents sent her enough money to live off of while she was a student, but not enough to live the crazy life of luxury she was after. After realizing that the account had an unlimited overdraft policy, meaning she could withdraw money that wasn't there, she took money out and sent it to herself on PayPal. Over the next seven months, she sent herself $4.6 million, funneling some of it into two different bank accounts. She used the money to go on shopping sprees, the biggest of which saw her spending $300,000 thousand dollars in a single day eventually she got a little too greedy the bank noticed something was weird when she transferred over a million dollars to paypal in one day number one kellen spadoni kellen spadoni was arrested in april of 2021 and charged with theft bank fraud and the illegal transmission of monetary funds those are some hefty charges yeah, so what did she actually do no well it wasn't time entirely her fault. Lots of time. spadoni attempted to transfer 82 dollars into her bank account but charles Schaub, her financial service company accidentally transferred more than 1.2 million dollars she should have contacted the company and told them about the error that's where she made a very illegal mistake Spadoni transferred the money to another bank account and then bought a new car and house. However, her spending spree didn't last long and the bank tried to take the money back. She got fired from her job working as a 911 dispatcher. She is currently facing civil charges because the job came after her with a case saying she ignored the request to get the money back. Come on, who would want to give back a million dollars? The company tried to get in touch with her on numerous occasions, but she ignored them. (laughs) She can't ignore them anymore, but at least she had a good run while it lasted. Click here to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comments mm, section, would you rather have mm, 30K a month for life or 5 million bucks 
right now. 30K for life. What are you talking about? 30K for life is way more than $5 million right now. So, yeah, 30K for life, player. Anyways, y'all let me know what y'all thought about that down in the comments below. That is that is wild. That is wild. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I just, like, that was just a lot of, like, the, the scammy ones. Like, obviously, you know, like, they was that was just super intentional. But some of the people who got in trouble because of, like, just random, just, like, human errors. Like, bro, you could have, like, you knew better. You know what I'm saying? Like, you knew better. Come on, mama. Anyways, let me talk about the, what you thought about that down in the comments below. I'll catch you on the next one. You dig what I'm saying? Peace.